Hey, what's up, you guys? It's uh, Inquisitor Eisen on Overlip. This let's play is I'm doing I'm doing this let's play a lot later than I thought I'd be doing it. <clears throat> I wanted to do this let's play a lot earlier, you know, you know like like days er, earlier or, or or whatever or weeks earlier, probably a week earlier. But uh, <clears throat> just been going through some stuff, been kind of a uh, Pressed for a while about stuff and uh, haven't really been unmotivated. I, I've been, you know, like my the stuff I've been going through has just been stopping me from uh, from uh, <coughs> the stuff that I've been going through has just you know been stopped me from let's playing. You know, it's, it's not that it really I, I'm for a while. You know, I, I was like I was just like I don't want to do let's plays for now. You know, so it's not, it's not like I didn't have the motivation to do. I still had the motivation to do let's plays. I just didn't have the time because I was doing other stuff. But anyway, you know that that's, that's enough about me. <clears throat> or not, enough about that situation. I'm going to start my next let's play, and like like e even now I'm still going through some stuff. But I still I still I still have you know plenty of let's play time. Like that that's the thing. Like I'm going through a lot of stuff, and the weird thing is I still have time. For let's plays, you know, like now. <clears throat> a few days ago, I didn't, and but uh, still, I'm still sort of down about. It. I'm hoping that like playing a game or whatever will help me out, or doing a let's play will help me out. So uh, yeah, I, I, I might not do as much commentary. It all depends on how talkative I'm feeling. But you know, you know thing, things are looking up now. It's just now it's just a waiting game. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's cut to the chase. <clears throat> How long to beat that com? Has this game clocked in at around nine hours? So we'll we'll see. I watch a few more seconds of this and then I'll officially start the let's play. enough but uh <coughs> there's already a let's play and a walk or a let's play or walk through on YouTube I've seen it before I don't I don't I don't remember if it's for the uh, if it's for the Xbox or for the PC I'm not I'm not really sure <coughs> but uh first of all no music no music I like this game. You know, like I, I have a feeling that it's going to be one of those. Uh, even though this game has a difficulty or difficulty settings, it's going to be one of those ones that's going to be uh, difficult. Just the way it is, I believe. It's just certain things. Like I, I don't, I still don't know if there's a way to actually heal yourself in battle or or in a mission. I don't know if there is or there or there isn't. <coughs> years of slowly simmering unrest, the Marxist rebels have obtained a foothold within the armed services and found sympathetic comrades to lend both a voice and weapons. While a full-blown coup d'etat is not yet underway, a few early, high-profile rebel victories could quickly turn the tide. U.S. forces have been called in to put a halt to these high-profile terrorist acts against U.S. interests. Your first action will be on a U.S.-owned oil platform just off the coast. Rebels have taken the crew hostage and placed charges. 
you need to find the hostages and secure the oil platform. You will have the element of surprise until the first shots are fired. So yeah, like, uh... The fact that, like, it may be, like, a little, uh... I don't think... First of all, like... I don't know, it's, 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 one, of those, it's one of those games where, like... It's not really a hard game. It's just, I, I think it's gonna be one of those games that has, like, long levels. Or, like, you know, sort of long levels. And... It's one, of, it's one of those games that's going to have like long levels, but at the same time, they also don't offer you like uh, any way to heal yourself. I, I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. But uh, <clears throat> um, this game received uh, pretty bad reviews on uh. I think uh. GameSpot.com and even uh, IGN gave us some bad reviews. You know, but the thing is, like, I feel as though it's important. It's very important for me to do low-budget games and, you know, like regular budget or or big budget games. You know, uh, when I, you know, when it comes when it comes to my let's plays. <coughs> Or at least for my shooters, anyways. I've done enough low-budget games, you know, like non-shooter games. I've already let's play, you know, like enough of those. Not enough, but like en en enough for now. But it's good to do. Le it's good to do let's plays of like of like budget games because, or budget shooters, because a lot of budget shooters have a lot of interesting ideas. If not interesting ideas, you know, like I don't know, it's just, it's just with with shooters. I like all I, I like all types of shooters. I guess, I guess because it was the first, you know, like as I you know like experienced like true console gaming or whatever. My first true console was a N64. My first console was a Sega Genesis. I had a bunch of handouts before then, but like I always considered the N64 my first true console because that's when I first got introduced into like first-person shooters and uh, and stuff like that and that, and that's also when I really started to uh, find my own like identity as it uh, not really ident identity but like you know my own gaming taste because when I got my Sega Genesis only thing I really played was stuff that I grew up playing already like Street Fighter and you know stuff like that because I, I, I didn't get my own system until very in my opinion very late my own console and so like once I got that, it was just okay. Well, whatever I played when I was drinking with anybody else, I'll I'll play now. And uh, yeah, but once I got the N64, and as I like to call it, like a whole new perspective, like on gaming with like first person and third person games, then I started like you know picking my own games and like finding stuff that I liked. I had that opportunity because I had my own my own system. And you know, like with shooters, I just I, I just have a soft spot, you know, because like once I once I got my N64, first game I you know that I received was uh, the world's not enough, and I was like, yeah, you know, like I never even played a first person shooter before that, <coughs> didn't even know what one was, and I played it and I just I just loved it, you know, I, 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 but like the thing is like. I can find enjoyment out of almost any type of uh, game, you know, that you know, like that I like, or any any, any type of game that fits in the genre that I like. Like with RPGs, especially for the sixth generation and the seventh generation, you know, like I, I I like them all. I'm not really a big graphics kind of person. As long as it looks interesting, I I'll, I'll buy it and give it a shot, you know. And even if I if it looks interesting but it, it really isn't that great I'll just keep it anyways you know because now, now that I shop online it's like or on Amazon it's like I have no reason to trade in my games anymore to GameStop 
so yeah you know a lot a lot of budget shooters or or, or uh, low budget shooters <coughs> they have a lot of interesting ideas one game that I'm really thinking about doing and I think I will do it will be uh, 13 for the PS2 Oh, that game I love that game right there that, 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 that's another game that has a lot of like interesting ideas and it, it brings a lot of new stuff or different stuff to the first person genre that's one game that I definitely want to add One game that I really enjoyed <coughs> was uh, the, the Duke Nukem games for the N64. Once I got those games, it was over. Like I was a fr I was a shooter fan, basically for life. After that, I was like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sticking this out and just you know, you know like riding with shooters for the long haul. And I remember, uh, Duke Nukem 64 was always kind of hard for me. I actually never even beat Duke Nukem 64. I, I did, but I, I didn't beat it when I had it. I, I eventually, like, got the cheat codes from a, a website called GameSages.com, which I believe was owned by IGN. Or owned by GameFAX, which is owned by IGN. But at the time, I think, I think like I, IGN wasn't even a part of GameFAX. Like I, I, I only think they were a thing back then. So I, you know, I beat Duke, I beat Duke Nukem with the codes. <coughs> but that game was always kind of hard for me because you know, like it was just so freaking massive as far as like like levels and like yeah, so many freaking levels. And uh, so I never beat that game. But also I had Duke. Well, I, I did. It wasn't until when the 360 first came out, and they were putting like classics on the 360, like they put Duke Nukem uh, 64 in there, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, really?" So that's when I when I really when I really beat the game. <coughs> After that, because it's not the thing is like the more I played shooters. After that, you know the N64, you know the you know sort of like the better I. I got it then, and so like, by the time it came out, I was like a better, I was slightly better at uh, sh sh shooters than I than I was before. Be on N64. There was a game. There was another game called Duke Nukem Zero Hour. Duke Nukem Zero Hour was a really tough game. It was a really fun game as well. And that and that was the game that I'd always that I could always beat. It took me a long time to beat it because, like, mind you, like every level is like <coughs> every level in Duke Nukem Zero Hour is like thirty-five to like I think thirty, like twenty-five to thirty minutes, and there's no checkpoints, no nothing, and that was kind of easier for me, sort of because like the levels they didn't have a lot of hidden areas, like the. Uh, Duke 64 did. So like it was sort of easy for me after like a couple days or a couple weeks or whatever to freaking you know just memorize the level, you know because the levels were so straightforward. I mean I mean there there, there were a certain there were like hidden levels in that game, but not as many like hidden levels and hidden passageways as in like the Duke uh, Duke Nukem 64. So I, I want to beat that game right there. And you know that that's why I say you know when I when I finally got Duke Nukem 64 for the uh, 360, I was a slightly better gamer because when I when I when I, when I go back to play Duke Nukem Zero Hour, that game is hard. Like I mean, I mean like I, fi I find myself wondering how like how to, how did I even beat certain games when I was younger. So like there's there's certain levels I can still there's certain levels that give me trouble. I'm not gonna say that I can't beat the levels from uh, Duke Nukem Zero Hour, but there's certain levels that give me trouble, like a lot of trouble. Like you know they, they they definitely give me more trouble now than they did when I was younger. Because when I was younger, I just I could just play all that stuff 
and mainly because also when I was younger, my gaming interest was just was just shooters and like a, 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 few, a few like action games or whatever, <clears throat> and like wrestling games. So I had more time to just play other stuff. Like here, if I, like if, if, if the game's too tough for me or whatever, and I don't feel like really like. After spending, after spending like a couple weeks or a couple days on it, if it's too tough, I just get I, I, I'll just play something else. When I was younger, all I really had was sh you know, shooters. If 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 that sh if this if this shooter was too hard, I just play something else, another shooter, or a or a fighting game, you know. But now that I'm into RPGs and adventure games and other stuff, now I can just say, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to dwell on it. I can just play something else. What is the good and the bad thing? Because you know, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with really, like memorizing like a really tough game or just like learning a, a, like a really tough game. And I, and I do, I do like tough games. I just don't like. I don't really like to record tough games, but like playing them, you know, like I, I don't mind playing something that, that um, I don't mind playing something that has a challenge, as long as I'm not let's playing. But uh, you know. I'll be right back. Be right back. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. You know what this game reminds me of? Or at least the AI. <coughs> the AI in this game, you know, that you know, like they're so like sporadic in their movement. They remind me of uh the Bond games. Not really the uh the ones on the N64. But uh the Bond games on uh like the PS2 and the uh, GameCube. You know, the, the Bond games excuse me the bond games of the sixth generation like 007 nightfire and 007 agent underfire the ai moved a lot similar to the way the ai the ai in uh, this game actually moves cuz like you know like <coughs> the ai in this game it kind of reminds me of like rats how like they like they're like all over the place they're like darting here they're darting there The only thing that this even sort of this even like sort of human about them is the fact that they shoot guns, or the fact that they can shoot a gun. And those will also be games that I'm going to do as well. Like, <coughs> will I do all of the Bond games? Probably. I mean, I, I would like to, but I don't think I want to do all the Bond games back to back. Like, I, I, I wouldn't do that. But uh, I think before before I before I give up on Let's Plays, or before, not not give up, but before like I just stop doing Let's Plays, which hopefully will be a long time. Before I before I stop, I'm going to have at least half of them because there's Agent Under Fire. Nightfire. I forget which one comes first out of those two. Then there's Everything or Nothing. There's also I think it's from Diamonds or Forever. Either Diamond. No, I think it's from Russia with Love. 
and then there's uh detonating charges on the oil platform. Double agent. They all explode the results could be both a financial and ecological disaster. Much of your path off the oil platform has been blocked by debris and fire. You will need to find alternate routes and disarm the explosives you find on the way. <laughs> the terrorists have been detonating charges on the oil platform. If they all explode, the results... Alright, so that's the end of that, that video. And I think that level... So I'll see you guys in the next video.